Hello everyone, I'm Tane from Junior Programmer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is the game that we'll make in this tutorial using JavaScript, HTML and CSS for a web browser. So you might have all played this game on Android or somewhere. So we'll create this game um, in this tutorial. So keep up with the video and we'll create this video and we'll create this game in this video in very simple steps and I'll share the code with you too so you could also replicate it. So let's start. First of all the HTML file. So HTML file since it is uh, on a web platform we need to have HTML file. So for the HTML file I'll start with defining the main tags for example the doc type, HTML tag, uh, meta tag, head tag, all these the basic HTML tags and then I'll include some uh, script or some links for example these are for the ajax and these are the kind of libraries the jquery um, that we'll require in this project so i'm simply just using the um, the cdn of these which can which are available from on their website and you can also use the ones that i'm using here you can use the same exact code so giving the title and now linking the style sheet and then let's move on to the body the main part so first of all I'll link the app.js this is the file that I'll create afterwards this will have this will have all the functionality now I'll create the divs um, giving it different IDs for example container game score um, instruction and so on and another div with a different class so this will be useful when we're going to style the um, document because we can refer to these IDs and class and style them in the style sheet so simply just writing some text onto uh, using the HTML um, that we'll be using later. So this is for HTML. Let's move on to the CSS, the style sheet. So this is also important because of the styling to make the output more beautiful. So first of all, I'll simply import the fonts from the Google fonts, uh, Google APIs from the same um, link that you can see and now move on to the styling. So I'll start with the HTML and body. These are the tags and these are the styling that I've given to them. Margin, overflow, height, and so on. Then for the hash contain, a hashtag container means the class where the ID is container. So as you can see, this is where the ID comes into play. So giving it some attributes, the height, um, the width, then the container and the score. Again, giving some attributes just to make it more beautiful and according to our required output. Um, the position, the top, the transition, the color and so on. Similarly, adding for the other classes and IDs. So now for the ID container and the class is game over. So dot is for the class and hash sign is for the ID. We are then defining some attributes, the position, top, left, weird, direction, um, align items in the center and so on. Um, and then when the game's over, Again, we're defining some transition, some opacity, transform, and a different and a color. That you can see the color is in the hex code. Similarly, for uh, others, we'll do like this: um, the container, container ID, game over class, and header two tags. Um, define some attributes. Define some styling. Um, now for container and game ready again. Um, defining some attributes: position, top. These are just the basic attributes that you'll need to define every time. Um, just to make it more beautiful you could also just use the same as mine so you can get the same output as the one we'll get at the end of the video or the one that we um, that i showed you in the start so moving on uh, there for, for the styling required for the start button and we'll you will do it using the code written um, the styling attributes again as i've told you uh, moving on for the instructions uh, class within the instructions ID within the container ID. So these are the divs whose ID is container and then another div within that whose ID is instructions. So you see this is where the ID comes in handy. So again some attributes and moving on instructions dot height um, opacity is zero and it's important this means that it will um, make it more appear more appearable so that it can be easy to see. Now um, using some transform, opacity and um, these kind of things just to make it more beautiful, more attractive and um, just good to look at for the output according to our requirements. You could also just um, try and experiment with these values a bit um, just so you can know how it changes the output. 
um, but for first I'd recommend that you use the same exact thing so now let's move on to the JavaScript file this is where the all the things happen um, this is where it makes it um, responsive so I'll first start um, with a class named uh, stage um, within the class I'm defining the um, constructor and I'm using the this variable this is the this variable is a special variable which is used to refer the um, things within the same class so I'm adding the functions add remove elements and then the container next moving on to the renderer so for renderer we are using the webgl renderer um, these are like the built-in libraries and I'm just giving some attributes anti-alias alpha um, window uh, windows um, width inner width inner height um, color and all these kind of things now the scene um, and then the camera so these are just some things that I need to define um, according to our scene so for example let's say for camera we would want to define that from where the camera uh, looks the position of the camera the x position the y position the z position and how it looks onto the screen just like your eye like where it is placed that particular thing now the light and um, light is also like a camera you can say it is like from which direction what kind of light is pointing onto the scene so you can see I'm using just some functions, some built-in functions in the directional light um, to set the color and the um, set the color and the position of the light and so on. Um, now st a stage or prototype would set camera. Again, it's a it's a function which uh, takes two inputs, y and the speed. Now if speed it's, if speed is zero. Um, it gives us some speed and now again um, it changes the position of camera accordingly like how it will move according to the scene when the blocks will move the camera will also have to move according to the blocks so it just adjusts that thing and now the resize function on resize it, uh, it again um, do some changes with the camera left right top bottom like how it will change so these are just some basic things and um, if you do not understand it for now you can just um, use the same exact code as mine and then you can make changes to the values and then you will be able to understand now the class is ended now creating another class block these are the block the blocks that will be used so in the constructor i'm just defining some things some um, types like dimension position target block index working plane and all these kind of things these are like you can say the things related to the 3d structure of the um, output of the block um, you do not need to get into details um, for now um, just follow the code, uh, code and you'll be able to get this output so set the dimensions uh, from the target block like how far is the target block and set the dimensions the width the height the depth and um, the position uh, the position on both axes x y and the third x axis z because it is a three dimensional space so it will have three axes and um, then defining the color offset um, this is the question mark is an if statement um, you can think of it like an if statement um, after that I am setting the color changing the color to the particular color that I have mentioned I <coughs> am um, using an if statement if it is not the target block then the color is different and if it is the target block then the color is different I am using some variables and some mathematics to settle all these things and the colors now the state um, we'll set the state and now we'll set the direction so for the direction is like for the moving block um, it, if, it's one, if it's moving in one direction then the direction changes after some time and that's all and all that things now create the block um, we'll create the block with some width height and depth the dimensions that we've given um, and after that we'll then apply onto the matrix these are just some functions um, within that which help to create as a 3d block um, onto the screen um, for example the mesh uh, mesh tone material mesh and these are the like the built-in functions within the three library the library you can say is three so we're using that just to create a block according to our dimension and place it and render it so if then using some if statements to put it uh, put the block on right position and now using some um, functions for example the reverse direction function will be used to reverse the direction um, for example once it goes into one direction and closes it closes and crosses the stack if you have to move, come in the other direction so it keeps on uh, moving over the blocks um, then is the place function where we will need to place the 
um, blocks when we place it on top so what will happen this is the function that defines that thing uh, again in this function you can see that you could feel that some of the things are too complex but actually they are not um, if you look at the code you can make small changes and can see what really happens so this is simply I'm just playing around with the position and the dip, uh, height and depth of the blocks and all this kind of stuff now if uh, we have to check the um, overlap um, because the part of the block that is overlapped will remain and the left and the other one will be chopped off so again we're defining the chop dimensions um, this is just you can see I'm just using some um, piece of code um, to get those dimension and remove it from the block for the next time Um, so as you can see I'm using the functions box geometry apply matrix and all these kind of functions um, again I'm telling you they might seem a little complex for the start but they actually are not you can just follow the code for mine and you'll be good to go um, there's one more thing about this that we need the app.js file JavaScript file and it is so important because JavaScript is, uh, is what helps the page to become responsive or you can say take inputs and do something according to the inputs that is why the javascript is so important so moving on again as you can see i have uh, defined an object um, chop position which has the positions and then again checking if it is within the working plane and if it is on the onto the block i then chop the block um, and then chop it according to the dimension whatever is uh, onto the stack and the leftover part will be chopped off and all the remaining part will be added so I was telling you that the JavaScript is very important for this project. This is why it may seem complex because it is a 3D kind of structure, 3D kind of output. It may seem complex but again I'm telling you, you do not need to worry, just follow the code for now. Um, just make small changes and you will surely get the code with it does. So now I'm also creating the function take. Um, this function also checks the thing and reverses the direction for example it is like the motion of the uh, block that has to be placed on top um, and it checks the direction and position and all this kind of stuff you can just replicate this code for now and um, now the third class that we'll create is the game class um, again this variable as i've told you is a special variable used to refer the variables and the function within the particular class where going in um, define a variable state which is an object having keys and values um, then adding blocks so the blocks is like the number of blocks which are there we're using an array for that um, and then creating the object for the stage class that we have, uh, we have coded before now just using some uh, not using some code for example get element by id by just manipulating the html things um, it helps to for example get element by id container score and button will help to um, access those so simply just creating the uh, using that and now um, creating the blocks and initializing all the things um, by making the objects of the classes and just passing um, the, the arguments to the functions according to our requirements um, and then for example the key down is the key the space bar um, key code for space bar is 32 and this is when it's key down it is pressed some action is taken and it is clicked some action is taken and when um, the touch starts some action is taken so this is just like to um, get an input from the user and sense that user has given some input okay so we'll then do some work so in this same class the game class i'll also get in the function the update state function um, for this i am just using an array uh, just using a loop um, to check whatever the button is pressed and according to that i'll perform the action now the on action um, which i've defined before is what happens on action for example um, if the game is not ready then start the game if it is ended then restart the game and so on so it is according to like what is the state of the game and then the start game that I have defined before that I have told you will be using so let's define the function so in this function again it will start the block and add block and all that um, similarly for restart game as you can tell from the name um, it will restart the game for example it will slow down the um, speed and uh, may remove all the extra blocks that are after that and will um, 
revert the scene to its original um, scene like first when it starts when there is nothing on top of the of the block so this is what this function is used to do so for that i'm just changing the speed and the position of the blocks and the lens and all this kind of stuff so that we could get the actual scene in the start So also we'll also need to adjust some camera movement which I have done right now and set the camera at the start according to this scene um, which I have done here using the set camera method um, and then the countdown and so on the countdown will be there um, for example the score and for the score and these kind of things. Um, now moving on the next next function is the place block so this is the as you can tell from the name so just from the name that it places the block onto the stack of blocks um, as you know in the output so it will simply create new blocks and then remove the old block if there, if there is any and then create the keep on adding the blocks to the place where it is and then chop the blocks um, accordingly and put an, put them onto the top whatever part is left whatever part overlaps them so it is just um, using the same function and all the code that we have defined before um, using in here and performing all these functions um, we are placing the block according to the right conditions onto the top of the stack um, so that the extra block is chopped off and all that kind of stuff so it will also check if the block is actually on top or if it is completely off the top of the stack because if it is completely off the top uh, top of the stack this means that it isn't on the tower or the stack and the game ends so this is also what it checks um, using these conditions if and else um, and then it will have to end the game accordingly and um, now again i've called this function as you can see add block and now define the function add block Um, so again if all the blocks are completed then the game will be ended and the score will be displayed to the user whatever the score he has made um, will be made visible to the user and will be shown on the screen and now the game will start again and the camera will change accordingly and um, block of length will change and all these kind of things. So finally the function there is also in the function the end game um, so this will just change the state of the game to end it and all the things that we have defined before for the end it will take place um, and the tick function that I have been using for so long in the code um, this also is for the render so this is what all it was in the javascript uh, file now let's go to the output so as you can see this is what we have been able to achieve uh, we, play, we use spacebar for this and when we um, press spacebar the block lands on the top of stack and if it's off the stack it simply says um, game over so it's also chopping off properly as you can see and different colors colors are changing for the stacks or for the blocks as we have defined so it gives a cool animation and gives a cool output so that was all for this video i hope you enjoyed this video and um, see you guys in the next video goodbye for then